don't even, probably not a better way to respond than to come up against Adelaide United. Um, what's the uh, response been on the track this week? Yeah, our response has been really good. Uh, we obviously needed one. It um, yeah, wasn't a great performance by us. Um, so in the end, we, we got what we deserved uh, with the result. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a, a, a big game for both clubs. Uh, obviously, it's a huge rivalry. Um, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure there'll be a much better performance. How high stakes is this? Like, I know you're sitting fourth, but it's so tight at the top in the race for finals. Adelaide, it feels like they're on their last legs in terms of going for finals as well. Yeah, these, these are unique games that, regardless of position on the table, um, yeah, they're special matches and it's always high intensity, high aggression, high passion. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to that and, um, you know, we, we need to get the performances back, you know. Just going back a couple of weeks ago, we had a very good performance against Melbourne City, a very good performance against West United. Um, you know, we're not a bad team two games later, but uh, we had a bad performance, so we have to accept that and, um, you know, we've got to move forward quickly. What have you pinpointed as the key areas for improvement from that Brisbane game? Work rate, number one. That's, I think, uh, something that we can control and, um, you know, the, um, very rarely have I thought that an opponent outworked us uh, this year and, and Brisbane certainly did, so we've got to get that back. Do you, sorry, sorry, do you write it off as an anomaly the way that you conceded goals? Like, you know, two Marco mm. Rojas said as you guys have conceded too many chances this year. It felt very, very out of character and I know Roddy wasn't there as well. Yeah, we, we didn't defend our box well, which is something that we've uh, done extremely well this year, but um, that's just one part, I think, um, just the, our whole game. I think we scored two very nice goals. It's a shame that we don't speak about that more um, because the overriding thought is uh, the performance, which wasn't good. Um, but, you know, we've had a very good response in training uh, and, you know, we're all looking forward to the game and uh, that's the best way to move forward. Roddy comes straight back into the starting lineup from suspension. Yes. And Raleigh Bonavarts here. He got his first minutes yesterday, but obviously he's been building up fitness. How did he pull up and can he go longer uh, this time around? Uh, I don't know about longer. We'll see about longer, but hopefully it goes better. Um, so we want a better performance than what he did in Brisbane. But he scored a very nice goal and he showed uh, the quality that he has uh, as a midfielder. You know, I think he had three attempts, scored a beautiful goal, and he had a couple more as well from the edge of the box. And, um, yeah, that's something that he brings to our team. Ryan Teague, he's going to miss this game with a, an injury, and he's probably maybe your more, most defensive minded natural midfielder you've got in the team. Yep. How do you go about replacing him? Do you go more attacking? What does someone like Chapman come in? What are you thinking? Uh, we, we have a few options there. We've uh, obviously got Connors an option in midfield. Um, Jordy, uh, young Jordy Valadon, who's now coming to, to full fitness, got some more minutes in the NPL. Young Fabian Monge, who's played a big part for us, Jake Brimmer. Um, so we've we got some good options in there to um, complement uh, the other players and the other midfielder. How long do you expect to be without Ryan for? Uh, we'll see. He's got a bit of a hip complaint, something that he's been um, ongoing for quite some time for him. Um, just one of those injuries that hang around and it's flared up a little. We, we don't anticipate it being a, a long-term injury, but. Uh, at the moment, he's uh, struggling with it and he'll miss this game. You mentioned the goals that you scored on the weekend. I think earlier in the season, scoring goals for you Adelaide, now you're starting to find that. Adelaide can be quite an open team. How mm. big an opportunity is this to you know, show what you can do offensively? Yeah, we, uh, yes, we have an opportunity, that's uh, for sure. Uh, also, we have to respect the fact that they are very dangerous and um, you know, it's, it's a game that they feel that they'll, I'm sure they feel like they have to win and they'll, they'll come really hard at us. and. So we have to get back to having that solid base where we've defended very well as a team. But um, you know, we've, we've got to add to the nice goals that we scored on the weekend and um, you know, get some more fluency in the front third. And uh, we can build on at least that aspect of our game from Brisbane. The original rivalry, it's always a game with height and tensions. I mean, mm. people saw earlier this year, high most tried to ban your fans and so they were forced to backflip on that. <laughs> but we've seen this past week, there's been a lot of talk about policing and how security deals with fans. I mean, what have you made of the way that fans have been policed this season? And what was your reaction to the scenes we saw in Brisbane, MacArthur and Western Sydney over the weekend? Um. Look, the, the policing is not uh, an issue that's just come up now. It's uh, been around for quite some time, and um, uh, 
from my experience at you know at Wanderers, a big club, uh, always had policing uh, concerns and issues. Uh, we've had it here at Victory, but um, yeah, I, I can only speak really about uh, our club here. You know, our fans have been wonderful. Yes, there's been some uh, uh, issues in the past um, with the fans and police, but um, you know we're very proud of our fans and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing them in Adelaide. You're a very well-travelled coach and mm. player. You've played coached mm. all over the world. Do you think there's an understanding here in Australia outside of football, just what football culture is, and there's a proper appreciation mm. about the uniqueness of it and how that needs its own approach compared to policing other sports? Uh, possibly, but you also, um, yeah, the, I'm sure the police feel that they have their job to do and is, is trying to find that right balance uh, between the two but you know it, it's a talking point at the moment uh, due to the last couple of weeks but you know in all honesty this has been a talking point um, you know, from my experience since Wanderers inception. Was it, is it a promising change in tact that we've seen clubs now come out? Maybe a few years ago this wouldn't have happened to say no we stand by our fans we back our fans whereas I think maybe a few years ago even there was the frustration that they go, oh, well, the clubs aren't backing us in, yep. well, we turn up, we'll boycott, this sort of thing. It seems like there is that genuine uh, support being put in. Yeah, I think the yeah the, the, the clubs, um, yeah, it's very important. The fans are so important to every, every club. And uh, you know, here at our club, I know what, what they mean to us uh, as a football staff, uh, the playing group, uh, the administration, uh, the board level. Um, we love our fans and uh, we don't want to change them. We love their passion. We, we love their support. We appreciate their support. You know, we, you know, we appreciate the support that we had people traveling to Brisbane. So um, they're special and that can't change. Uh, how that understanding can get better, um, yeah, that, I think that can be done at a higher level um, to get better um, relationships uh, between the stakeholders. But, um, you know, for us, it's business as usual, um, you know, we want to see our fans travel to uh, Adelaide and enjoy the heat, <laughs> enjoy the game and um, you know, we want to help them come home and celebrate three points with us. How do you factor in the heat? We know the game's already been pushed back, tiring, I imagine it can get quite leggy, um, how do you go about it? Yeah, we got, we got to deal with that and um, you know, um, I don't believe that that should be a, a talking point for us. Um, you know, we've got to do better in, in those conditions and we've got a chance to show against Adelaide, not just the opponent, but uh, in those type of conditions that, um, you know, we can uh, get our game back as it was a couple of weeks ago. Just on Ryan, him and Nish are going to be named in the Ole Gru squad today. Is his hip injury something that might prevent him from going to Saudi Arabia? Um, if he's injured, yes, of course. Um, if he's not, then, if, um, you know, obviously we'd be very happy for him to go. But, so that Ryan and Nish have named in this squad for the March window indicates that FA are going to want to take them to the under-23 championships in April as well. And I think you're obligated to release them under the contract. Contractually, you're obligated to release them. Are you already thinking about how you'll have to deal with them at their absence for an extended period? Oh, look, we, we've had that in the back of our minds that they could be selected and, and possibly there could be a couple others that are. Um, so that's something that we've been well aware of and uh, that's why you have a squad. Uh, that's why you have players with a chance to, to come in and play and um, you know, if, if they go uh, to those games and they go to the qualifiers, well, yeah, we'll be proud of them and, and support them from afar but uh, it will be business as usual and um, other players will have to step in and, and do the job. About 50 player soccer is long list. Have you got anyone on there? I actually don't know, to be honest. I know. Um, I would hope we're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we, we do have a few. I don't know, actually, um, I'm not quite sure who the names are, but um, yeah, look, it's a 50 man squad. I always look at that, and um, there are a lot of players on there, so I don't really look into that uh, too much. But uh, same as the Oli Roos, if, uh, if a, a player or players are se selected, then we as a club will be uh, extremely proud of them. Just no other injury concerns that have popped up? The week? No, uh, everyone else is good and uh, raring to go, so hopefully after this morning's session it remains the same. Okay. Awesome. Okay.